Hi, so now we want to discuss a full case planning with the X-rays uh, and software. So this is a bilateral tibia vara with external rotation deformity. 18 year old male complains of the deformity and the deformity has increased with his growth spurt. Since six months, he has some mild pain in the knee and obvious Varus is seen. The thing, the thing to notice is the in-squinting patella, which means an external rotation deformity. So the full length x-rays are done for planning. No sagittal deformity. For the rotation, clinically thigh foot axis is measured, which on the left side is 20 degrees and on the right side there's 15 degrees. Also do a CT rotational profile to measure the exact deformity. So version in the femur is fine. All the external rotation deformity is in the tibia. <coughs> on the right side, it is 38 degrees of external rotation. And on the left side, it is 42 degrees. And up to 20 is normal. So about 18 and 22 degrees deformity. We did a trauma cat planning. Shows LDFA is normal. And the deformity is all in the proximal tibia on both sides. The cora is found at the metaphyseal region. And doing an osteotomy there corrects the deformity pretty well. There's no limb length discrepancy. In, in squinting patele, no thrust. So we plan for the surgery. We usually apply the frame with simple hinge for ease of application and apply the depth fix in the post operative period you can also apply the depth fix in draw -off. so the osteotomy is done a little further away from the cora to achieve stability at the proximal tibia now, this is the X-ray after application of depth fix. Notice few things here. The beam, um, the X-ray needs to be focused in such a manner that the joint line is seen well. The beam center pointed out by the red arrow here. We place a radio pick marker number six here. That is the beam center where the crosshairs of the X-rays meet. The yellow markers are the scaling object, which is 100 millimeters K wire, which we have placed here for the magnification. All the struts have been marked with the X-ray markers to identify um, the struts. So we can see three thin lines here. So this is strut number one. And that is thin, thick, thin, strut number three. One does not need to remember all these codes. They are always there on the software for cross-checking. Similarly, everything seen well on the lateral view. None of the struts are getting cut out. So this is how an ideal X-ray should be done for the depth fix. So now we can go ahead and for the program. So the numbers have already been put in and we have marked the lines. Orange lines are all lying on the struts. So go to the next step. For bone orientation, we'll draw the mobile segment. 
So that's the osteotomy. On the lateral view, same thing, almost similar length of bone fragment is marked. And then we draw the bone axis. So here, since it's a metaphyseal deformity, we need to use the joint line for the AP view. So that's the green tree. Place these crosshairs on the joint. And like we had planned initially, the targeted MPTA is 87. So this is the medial angle which we need to change. So as you move the marker there, now this is the projected proximal axis. Place it well centered there. Mark the resection end of the osteotomy and the shaft for the distal mobile fragment. One can extend this line and identify where the cora is coming for this. So as per our plan, the cora was slightly more proximal. So I need to modify this slightly. Yeah, that is not like it. Now if one can notice, there's already a translation noted between these two axes. That is the amount of translation which would be required when we are using the osteotomy rule number two. In the sagittal view, there is no deformity to be corrected. So we want that angle to be zero. So move your line such that we get a zero degree line, zero degree angulation between them. When I right click on this point, it toggles. So now it is zero. But the lines are translated. So I just need to move this tree to get these two axes collinear. So no, no more translation going to happen on the sagittal plane because there's no correction happening there. And then we can go ahead and mark the structure at risk, which is the concave side here. We are also going to correct some rotational deformity. So in this case, we will be internally rotating the limb. So this fragment is going to move to the right. So you can place the structure at risk on the anterior side there or midline, whichever you choose will be the correct thing and go ahead and calculate. Now, the fragment, the deformity is corrected. The mobile fragment has become collinear with the proximal axis. No movement happening in the sagittal plane. Now, because this translation is happening using the osteotomy rule number two, we should avoid any clash. Uh, to avoid any clash at the osteotomy between the fragments, we will add distraction. Also, it's a good idea whenever we are doing a rotational correction to add distraction 
to get a smooth regenerate. You can always compress at the end by using the add residual program. So here this was the right leg. The deformity was external rotation. So we need to move the foot to the right. So we will use this arrow to correct the rotation. We have already calculated the rotation deformity is around 15 degrees. And then you can go ahead and print the schedule. Add the date and we have got a program for 14 days and no red marks, no red flags. So all the struts are well within the limit and do not need any adjustment. So this is after seven days of distraction. Some distraction has happened at the osteotomy. Little bit of translation has also happened. Earlier the center bolts were well aligned. Now the middle ring uh, center bolts are slightly turned. So some rotation correction has also happened. And we go ahead and at the end of 14 days, the full correction has been achieved. The HK is now corrected. Mechanical axis is passing through the center of the knee. This translation is intentional because of the osteotomy being further away from the Cora. So the osteotomy rule number two has come into play. Already some region that is forming. And then we go ahead and add some compression because there was no LLD. We do not want to distract him too much. So go ahead, get back to the program and now add residual. Everything else being good, you just add 5 mm of compression. The red, red contour has moved closer to the astronomy. Go ahead and print the schedule. Step two, and that's the amount of compression required. So one can go ahead and do it in gradually in five days. But since this is just compression, uh, we have done it over a couple of hours in the OPD set setting itself and uh, finished all the compression acutely. And that is at the end of 5 mm of compression. So everything looking good. One can go ahead and finalize the correction. That is the rot rotational correction. So patella forward. Now the foot is slightly externally rotated, which is what it should be. And on the uncorrected left side with the patella forward, the foot is external. The bow is also visually corrected. Go ahead and change the hexapod struts to straight rods. Now because these rings are uh, not parallel, perfectly parallel to each other, and they are also translated. One should use coupled washers combination or a universal hinge or simple hinges at one of the ends and coupled washers on the other end to keep the rods straight and avoiding any undue tension between the two rings. So that's after the conversion of the rods. Thank you.